Jerry of the Circus. for Jerry of the Circus. Mr. Randall. Who is it? It's Jerry, Mr. Randall. Oh, come in, Jerry. Come on, Rags. Good morning, Jerry. Rags. Good morning, Mr. Randall. You sent for me? Yes, Jerry, sit down. It's about last night. You're, you're going on in place of Johnny Bradley and doing his act. Oh, golly, Mr. Randall. I... Uh, just a minute, Jerry. I, I guess it wasn't altogether your fault, but there are a few things about this show I want you to know. But I just... Uh, you, uh, you just let me do the talking for a minute. I I sent for you because I want to explain something to you. Yes, sir. sir. Now, in the first place, I'm the boss of this show, and anything that's done on this lot has to have my okay. It has to be that way. If everybody in the circus wanted to change his act or let someone go on for him, and he went ahead and did it without telling me about it first, well, it just wouldn't be any time until I wouldn't have any show at all. Yes, sir. You know by now, Jerry, that everything goes off like clockwork around a circus. There can never be a slip-up. It might throw the whole routine off. I know that. If there has to be a change or a substitution, I should know about it. So I can tell the different ones that it might affect. No one in this outfit is allowed to take it upon himself to do anything but his own work. But you weren't around, and, well, something had to be done quick because Mr. Bradley couldn't go on. Yes, yes, I, I heard he was sick, and that part is all right. Besides, I've heard some excellent reports on your work. You were taking Bradley's place last night was all right, but... I want you to understand that I'm to be notified of any changes made in any part of the show from now on. Yes, sir. A couple of the boys told me you make a pretty good clown. They said you did the act just as if you'd been doing it for a long time. They said that? Yeah, I guess you did very well. Uh, how'd you learn that routine so fast, Jerry? Oh, I don't know. I guess I knew it pretty well from just watching. Well, you're going to turn out to be a real trooper someday. The circus needs wide-awake young men like yourself plain to be seen that if you keep your eyes and ears open, you'll get a long way, Jerry. You just keep watching the acts. Gee, thanks, Mr. Randall. Now, uh, getting back to Johnny Bradley, uh, what do you know about his being sick? Why, nothing. That is, well, all I know is that he gets fainting spells. Fainting spells? Uh Uh-huh. Bum said he thought he had a weak heart. Well, funny I haven't been notified of this. Guess I'll have to look into it myself. He gets weak and shaky, and and he can hardly walk. That's not so good. I think I'd better look him up right away and have a talk with him. Uh, Are you going over toward your wagon? Uh Uh-huh. Come on, Rags. (laughs) Always ready, aren't you, Rags? (laughs) Then then you're really not mad at me for last night, are you, Mr. Randall? (laughs) No, Jerry. I I just want you to understand about making any changes without telling me first. As a matter of fact, you did such a good job of substituting for Johnny last night, I, I think I'll make you an understudy for all the clowns. An understudy? What's that? Well, an understudy is a person who watches and learns other people's acts so that in case of emergency, he can go on and take their place. Just like I did last night, huh? That's it, Jerry. Golly, thanks, Mr. Randall. I'll watch all the acts and learn them real good. (laughs) That's a boy. Jerry? Oh, there's Jason, Mr. Randall. He's calling me. Come here, Jerry. Well, all right, run along and see what he wants. I'll see you later, Jerry. Okay. Goodbye. Come on, (laughs) Randy. Good morning, Mr. Randall. Oh, good morning, Slim. Johnny around? Here, boss. He's in his wagon. That's good. Come in. 
Uh, good morning, Johnny. Oh, good morning, Mr. Randall. Uh, where's Lats and Hooligan? Why, they went uptown after breakfast to do a little shopping. Good. I, I want to have a little talk with you, Johnny. Sit down, Mr. Randall. Thanks. Now then, uh, I understand you're not feeling so good. Oh, it's really nothing. I I just had a bit of a weak spell. I... Yeah, it's happened more than once, hasn't it? Well, yes, it has, Mr. Randall. Is it your heart, Johnny? I'm inclined to think it is. Not very good business working with a weak heart. Well, but I've got to go on working, Mr. Randall. Well, I, uh, I don't know anything about your business affairs, Johnny, but you've been getting a very nice salary from me for many seasons now, and, well, nothing personal, mind you, but you're getting along in years, and I should think that perhaps you might have some money put aside so you can take it easy now. Well, that's just it, Mr. Randall. I haven't been able to save anything for myself. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, well, as I said, nothing personal. I like you, and I like your work. Your act is as clever as any I've ever had, but, well, I, I just can't have a sick man working in the show. You're not going to let me go. You're not being fair to yourself going on working. The work you do isn't especially easy, and, well, you're just killing yourself. But I've got to finish the season. I, I can't quit now. It's for my boy, Mr. Randall. Your boy? Yes, sir. You see, ever since I started working for you, I've been sending him the biggest part of my salary. Oh, he's a good boy, Mr. Randall, and deserving of it. Well, can't he take care of himself? I've been putting him through law school. Oh. He passed the bar examinations only a couple of months ago, and and I'm helping him along with his office now. Oh. Well, this puts a different light on it. Oh, you see, sir, well, I'm trying to do all I can to help him get a start in life. Well, that's fine, Johnny. I've never told you this before, sir, but I was a star in my own right on Broadway. Oh. Why, I've operated my own stock company. I really amounted to something in the show world at one time. Well, that's so. My boy doesn't know I'm with a circus. He thinks I'm still in the theater and doing well. Uh, for reasons I'd... Well, I'd rather not go into, I, I had to leave the theater. So I took to the circus. In my letters to him, I've given him the impression that I can well afford to send him through school and pay the expenses of his office until he becomes established. Uh, now where is your son, Johnny? In Jackson City, sir. Jackson City? Why, we play there soon. Won't you see him? Well, not if I can help it, Mr. Randall. Huh. Uh, you're a funny fellow, Johnny. Your old heart may be weak, but it's certainly not selfish. No, sir. Won't you let me go on? Uh, just until my boy can, can get along without me. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, Johnny. You can stay on, but I want you to promise me that you won't do your act unless you feel up to it. If you feel the least bit ill, I, I want you to report to me, and I'll see that you won't have to go on. Will you promise me that? Oh, yes, sir. I, I will, sir, and thank you, Mr. Randall. Uh, you get as much rest as you can, and, and above all, don't worry. There's no doubt that boy of yours will make good. I can tell he comes from mighty fine stock. My everlasting gratitude, Mr. Randall. All right, Johnny. Take it easy now. See you later. Well, goodbye, Mr. Randall, and, and thank you again, sir. Goodbye, Johnny. Mr. Randall? Uh, oh, yes, Jerry? Look what Jason's got. Uh, I'll be right with you. We got a surprise for you, Mr. Randall. Mm, another mouth to feed. Well, what's this? Well, what do you mean, Jason? Well, Jerry and I just got this crate down at the railroad station. It's a lion cub. Well, you don't say. Well, Mally back at the winter quarters sent this cub on to me. We're just going to uncrate him. Well, let me look uh, through that crate there. <laughs> say, he's a cute little fellow, isn't he? Aren't you going to wait until we uncrate him? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Jerry. I got a lot of business to attend to. I'll see him later. Uh, remind me to come over and have a look at him, Jason. Okay, Mr. Randall. And we have screwdriver there, Jerry. Okay. Here you are. Want the hammer, too? Mm-hmm. Now, now let's see. Poor little thing. He wants to get out all right. <laughs> we'll have him out in a minute. Oh, you like to play with him, huh, Ray? Where are you going to put him, Jason? In with one of the big lions? Mm, not in your life. This little fellow's going to have a nice little cage all by himself. Yeah, there we are. Out you come. What's his name? Don't know that he's got a name yet, Jerry. O'Malley didn't mention it in the letter he sent to me the other day. Well, what are you going to call him? Well, we'll have to name him ourselves, won't we? Uh, do you name all of your animals? Well, most of them. Of course, some of them already had names when I got them. Can I name this one? Well, sure, if you want to, Jerry. Have you got a name for him? Well, no, but I bet I can think of a good one. Well, what's it going to be? Well, how about Fuzzy? Fuzzy? Yeah, because his fur is so fuzzy. <laughs> do you hear that? Your godfather, Jerry Dugan, does hereby decree and bestow upon you the name Fuzzy. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Golly, thanks for letting me name him. <laughs> well, Rags, getting jealous, huh? Are we paying too much attention to our new pal, Fuzzy? Remember, you told me I could start training the little cubs sometime. And you'd like to start on Fuzzy, hmm? Is he too young to teach tricks to? Oh, I guess not. We can start with a few simple things, like just getting him used to commands. 
What's the first thing to do? Well, we can teach him to sit up. Might even see if he'll jump through a hook for a nice piece of meat. But first, let's teach him and put him in the cage over there. Poor little fellow's been in that crate so long, we'll have to let him stretch his legs for a while. Here, open the door, Jerry. There you are, Fuzzy. There's your new home. That's the fella. Sniff around a bit and get your bearings. He acts just like a, a little kitten, doesn't he? Well, he does now, but it won't be long until his fur stands up and he declares himself. Quiet, Rags. <laughs> Rags is acting more like a wild animal than Fuzzy. You know, Jason, I, I don't see how you can take a real wild jungle animal and, and make him tame. Tame? Well, you wouldn't call any cats of mine tame, would you? Oh, I guess I didn't mean that. No, you meant manageable, Jerry. Yeah, that's it. Well, as I've told you before, it takes a lot of patience. The first thing a jungle animal thinks of is to strike out. Fear is unknown to them, and it takes a long time to teach them that they have a master. You have to show them that you're the boss, don't you? That's it, Jerry. But you have to do it with both kindness and patience. But never cruelly. That's right. Uh, hi, Jason. Hello, Sid. What's on your mind? I got the mail, Jason. Here's a letter for you. Thanks. A any for me? Well, this is Jerry Dugan, Sid. Uh, Dugan, let me see. Uh, uh, yep, yep, here we are. Golly, thanks, mister. Well, who's it from, Jerry? Let's see. Lakeside Hospital. Oh, I... It's from my Uncle Dan. Oh, fine, Jerry. Gee, that's great. Oh, uh, here's another one for you, son. Another one? Oh, a popular boy, Thanks. huh, kid? <laughs> you bet he is. <laughs> now, that's all. So long. See you later, Sid. Goodbye. Who's the second one from, Jerry? Oh, that's from the bank. The bank? Uh-huh. They were going to find out about the key I have to Dad's safety deposit box. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Well, aren't you going to open that one first and find out if they've located the bank where your safety deposit box is? Golly, I don't know which one to open first. They're both important. Well, go ahead and see what your Uncle Dan has to say. Oh, okay. Uh, should I read it? Sure, go ahead. My dear Jerry, you're most likely be waiting to hear from me. But until today, I haven't been able to do much with a pen. As I write this, I am in a wheelchair, and believe me, it feels pretty good to be out of bed for a while. The doctor says I'm getting along fine, and in a few days, he is going to let me try to walk. Oh, say that's fine. Golly, I'll say. Uh, I hope everything is going along all right for you. Give my regards to Bumps and Mr. Randall and all your friends with the circus. I'm anxiously looking forward to the day when I can join you. However, I will write you again before I am dismissed from the hospital. If you find time, I would like to have a letter from you. Hoping to see you soon, Uncle Dan. Oh, that's a fine letter, Jerry. You going to answer it? You bet. I'm sure glad he's getting better. Well, it won't be very much longer before he'll be with us. Now, how about the letter from the bank? It's pretty important that you find out where that safety deposit box is. I think I'll wait and let Patsy open it. There might be something real important in it. Uh -huh.